Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called the Go Venture Card Game. We have the Monster and Entrepreneur sets to this themed uh, game. You have two separate games. They both play the same way, but they are uh, different skins on them, and you get both of them in the same pack. In the game Go Venture Monster or Entrepreneur, you're going to be gathering monsters or products, and then you're going to be trying to put, uh, put customers to the products or put bounties to the monsters, along with uh, having weapons and accessories for the two separate games. And you're basically trying to gather world cards. And word, world cards are going to be from once you've attached certain things to, in the game together, like monsters and their bounties, you can then uh, trade two monster cards for a world card. And the, the world cards will have the two different types of monsters, whether it be blue and orange or uh, red and purple. And if you can get all three of these, you win. You can also gather coins as opposed to uh, trading in. Uh, for weapons and whatnot, and if you can gather a certain amount of money in this game, or e either game, you will win the game. Uh, anyway, that's the basic idea for how to play these two adventure entrepreneur style games. Um, I guess they're more like economy games. Anyway, let's go down below and I will show you uh, what they look like, all the stuff included, and how to play the games. So here we have both games, the Entrepreneur game and the Monster game by Go Venture. As you can see, they're set up exactly the same way because they both play the same way and they just have the different skins. Uh, they have the rule book here, which will tell you how to play Monster on one side. And then if you flip it over, it will tell you how to play the Entrepreneur one on the other. Uh, let's go ahead and go over the cards. So first of all, we have monsters and bounties. These are types of monsters and these are the types of uh, bounties. Uh, there's two different types of monsters that you're gonna try and get for bounties and how many coins you can gather if you successfully capture a monster. You've got action cards you can trade monsters in for that will give you certain things like a boost. And you've got weapons. These are all face up on the field that anybody can select from. They're basically going to allow you to uh, capture monsters and they have a cost. Uh, you have coins. These are additional coins in the game if you need change. And then you're going to have the monster world cards where you can trade in monsters you've captured for these cards. And if you can get all three, you will win the game. Uh, this is pretty much the same thing, but you're going to be using products like dogs and you're going to be trying to get them to go to customers like this guy here who wants a dog. And you're also going to be using uh, these certain colored, uh, I guess, I don't know what exactly they're called, business cards, like pet business. So you'll attach a dog with a pet business and then you'll hopefully find a customer to go and pick up that that dog from the business. And once you uh, once you do that, you're going to return the businesses here or the weapons here. And then you can, of course, buy them again. Uh, the world cards function just the same way. There's three different types. And of course, there's additional money for each of the additional games. Oh, there's, there's the extra card there. And then you have player references. This here is called Monster War. It actually will allow you to play a secondary little game that's similar to War. As far as the cards go, it's just going to have that little extra number there. And you'll be uh, drawing a certain amount of cards from this deck and playing them as you so choose. They all will have their resistances and, um, and whatnot. Uh, let's see here, I can show you. Uh, for instance, Dragons always beats Merfolk, and Merfolk always beats Oryx, and so on and so forth. Otherwise, the highest number wins, so play at your leisure, kind of like a two-player easy, easy to play game. But anyway, that's basically both of the games there. I'll go ahead and move these aside, and then we'll just talk about the monster one, because they're both... I, I, I'm not going to explain both games. They're both the same game, so uh, moving these aside. You're going to go ahead and get a player reference card. We'll just play with two players here. Each player is then going to get two monster cards face up on their field, just like this. And then they are going to decide who goes first. And we'll just go ahead and say that this guy goes first. And on your turn, it tells you in the rules, pretty simply actually, uh, that you're going to go ahead and uh, pick up a card from the monster deck and place it here. In your pile over here, you can only have five cards, uh, save this card here. But uh, you can have more, it's just at the end of your turn, you have to, you have to go down to five. And uh, the monsters with these world cards here, if you capture them, you can simply trade them in for the world card that they represent. You don't have to have both of the symbols. So these are special monsters. After you draw a card from your monster deck, then you can trade cards with other players, anything you'd like for any, any trade that you would like to do. You can buy uh, weapon cards. And of course, your first one that you get is always free, but otherwise they're going to cost four. Or you can buy or, tra uh, or, play, we or play action cards. Uh, to buy or tr play a weapon card, you go ahead and action card you'll discard two monsters to the uh, discard pile and then you can go ahead and take the top card and it'll do something for you whether it be boost uh you can pay force another player to give you coins um something, uh, take a monster that doesn't require a bounty 
so on and so forth. Legendary Hunter, they have a lot of different things that you can do in the game. When you play an action card, it just goes away, it can't come back. <clears throat> so, uh, we'll go ahead and just take the action card. Now that also goes in front of you. Then after that, you have, uh, so let's say he chose the, he cho he'll choose the vampire weapon. This is the first one he gets for the entire game, he gets for free. Now, he can choose a bounty card at the end of his turn or a monster card. If he goes for a bounty, he can flip over this card. If it doesn't match any of his pairs, his, we his weapon and his monster type uh, that are in the field. So if he had a orange weapon, an orange monster, and a red monster, and a red weapon, then um, he would have to match either the orange or the red to this card. And in this case, uh, the orange would work, but there's no red here, so this is going to get simply discarded right there. Now, on your, whenever you're drawing from these decks here or these decks here, you can always choose to draw from the top of the discard pile or the deck itself. It's up to you. So maybe drawing this card does not help him, but it may help the next player. After that, the turn ends. The next player is going to go. He'll get a monster card there. He'll then get the opportunity to get a weapon. Let's say he wants gray because he's got multiple gray monsters. And then he's going to keep his monsters and he'll simply go for a bounty. And that is going to work. That will net him a, um, that will net him a gray. So this will... Get, this will go back, this will go to his pool, now he has two dollars, and this monster has been slaineth. And uh, that's how that works. Now, oh sorry, it goes actually over here. And basically what happens is to get these world cards, oh no, oh no, oh no. When you gather a gray one and a yellow one, that's you can turn these guys in, and then you can go ahead and take these cards here. And if you get three of them, you win. The other way you can win is by having 20 gold and you get gold by just simply the bounty cards here as well as um, yeah, basically the bounty cards here or any, any additional change you can get or any trades you can make with other players as well. And that's basically how you play the game Go Venture uh, Monster as well as Entrepreneur. They both play just like this as I've explained. Uh, let's come up and I will give you my review of the game. All right, so what do I think about the game Go Venture, the monster and entrepreneur card game? Well, first of all, I'm going to be talking for both games as, as though they are one because that's kind of what how it works here. Reskin style game with different uh, different feeling to the game as far as the theme goes. Uh, realistically, they, they actually both work. They both work as far as the theme goes. I mean, the monster one, as you can see, you're gathering weapons and the, to fight the monsters. And then you're going to try and get a bounty for them to make it worth your while. And you gain the money and that will let you buy more weapons and rinse and repeat the cycle, thusly going around the world and defeating monsters. And with the entrepreneur ones, it's about getting money. You want to find the best customers for your ventures and you want to acquire as much money as possible in that game. Uh, both will work. Now, of course, this works. This theme will work for a, a ton of different other things, right? But I think the core concept that they're trying to get across is that you are able to make yourself an entrepreneur uh, in any different way you would like. And trading is uh, one of those things that is added to the game to show you that you can also try and say, oh, you want this? I'll give you this and whatnot. I think it's good for kids as far as learning how barding and trading can work. This will work very well for them. As far as adults playing this game, I, I doubt they're going to be doing a huge amount of trading unless it's a very large game and uh, somebody is very far ahead. Uh, in a two-player game, it's very unlikely that trades are actually going to happen in Go Venture because no one wants to give anybody an inch, right? You want to be as careful as you can to make sure you get the best deal. So there's always going to be that hesitation. In, in, a, in an example with kids, then maybe not so much. Uh, the artwork's fine. It's cool. It's all the monsters and whatnot are really cool. I, I prefer the monsters over the uh, advent, the venture capitalist, the venture or venture, go venture into entrepreneurs. That's what it is. Uh, and these ones are cool. They're kind of like cartoony. They're for kids, and it's 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 all around enjoyable. Uh, the first time I played this game, we played it multiple times uh, with with both of them just to see the difference and feel the themes. And the person I was playing with, uh, she really really enjoyed this game quite a lot. For me, it's 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 okay, you know. And realistically, I don't really understand why they have two of the same game in the same box. I think it would have been better if they were to cut this and sell them separately because realistically, if I wanted to buy monsters, I probably wouldn't want entrepreneurs and vice versa. They're very separate themes and they don't play different enough. Uh, in addition, the monster game has, a, has an additional little um, war game to it, which is a very simple strategic uh, placing game. You draw five cards from the deck and you both place them down and flip them over and uh, score points, rinse and repeat until, until the final deck is done. It's a little more uh, strategic than a game like War is, and it includes, of course, the the circle of of weakness and strengths, right? Pokemon style. It's fine. It's a cool little kids game. As far as anybody who's going to enjoy strategic style games, it's got some of that in there, 
but it's going to be specifically more enta entailed for a family. Um, not to say that this game is bad or anything. I just want you to make sure that you understand, like, it, this is going to be more on the family side of things rather, rather than it's going to be on the deep, strategical-minded people, at least in my opinion specifically. But overall, it's a fun little game. It's a game I could suggest to anybody playing that wants to teach their kids about trading and learning how to gather uh, certain things from other people and working together, but only to a certain extent to make yourself you know, more successful in life. It does that. Uh, check it out if you're interested down below in the link in the description for uh, Monster Entrepreneur, the card game. Uh, my only one thing is just, yeah, cut this and sell them separately. I just, I just want Monster, you know? I'm sure the people want Entrepreneur, but I just want this one. Yeah. Otherwise, cool little game.